Hello and welcome back. And for first time viewers, welcome. In this week's video, we're gonna explore how your brand isn't Nike and that's okay. But before we get to that, I wanna provide a little bit of context to this thinking. I've been rock climbing now for over 30 years. In the mid 1990s, the sport was very much a niche sport. It was still for the outsiders, the ones that didn't quite fit into normal spheres of existing sports and academia. In the preceding 30 years, this has changed hugely. It's now so popular, it's almost mainstream. Next week, it'll be on the biggest stage, the Olympics, for the second time. Couple this with the explosion of climbing gyms, and climbing is here to stay. But while it's seen incredible growth, we're still a small sport when it comes to our understanding of the best ways to become better climbers. While there's research out there, we still borrow a lot from other sports. And with this smallness, we're still close enough to its stars, so we're able to understand what training they do and how often. We have the tools to try and emulate our superheroes, but there's a problem. We aren't superheroes, and that's for two reasons. We don't have their training history. These superstars have decades of training in the bank. Secondly, we don't have the time to put into this work. We all have nine to five jobs, so fitting in the training would almost be impossible. So we have to adjust our training to be more realistic, and that's the same in business. We need to build structures and strategies for the business we are, rather than try and emulate organizations like Nike. Nike has an almost mythical history, an organization grown by Nike, named after the Greek goddess of victory, with a logo designed for a reported $35. You can watch a video we did on that and the Olympic logo at the link above. Known initially as a running shoe company, it developed across multiple sports with the now tried and tested partnership model. Think Naomi Saka and Michael Jordan. It's me. Hello. Up here. Hello. Um, I've been listening, but I don't really understand why you won't want to copy what Nike are doing. Okay, yeah, fair point. Let's break Nike down a little further. How many staff do you think uh, Nike has? Or how many stores do you think? Is that important? Okay, okay. How many Nike adverts would you say sell an actual product? All of them. Like, a, you know, a specific product. Some of them? Maybe actually none of them? Big brands have an incredible superpower with the ability to spend big on marketing and advertising. And a lot of this money can't really be spent on one product. So they sell their brand and its values. They're so big with such a large product range with so many employees that they really can't sell specifics. I don't follow. Okay, let's say you're a smaller company uh, selling sporks. Sporks? So they're this piece of cutlery that's a combination of a spoon and a fork, but it, that's not really important. Sounds kind of useful. Yeah, so anyway, you're selling sporks to a small group of businesses. You know who the buyers are, and you have a great product. You only have a tiny budget for marketing and advertising. So do you decide to make an advert about your company values and, and share your story? Or do you decide to spend that time and money on picking up the phone and trying to arrange a meeting with those buyers? I guess you do that later. So I would. Think about it. You're a small business where the founder is still very much involved. The values of the brand are one in the same as the founder. So your company brand and the person will share so much that they will almost be inseparable. Okay, okay, I kind of understand now. So large organizations have the superpower of scale, but they also have this crazy weakness. They hardly know their customers, like really know them. So as a smaller company, you have this agility to go meet your customers and make something that they really need. Right, okay, come again? Okay, put it simply, you don't need experienced marketing. You just need to speak to your customers, build with and for them. Okay, got it. These ads are still cool though, right? Yeah, they are indeed. And while your competitors are wasting their time on vanity adverts, you can be concentrating on building a product or service that is genuinely made to make a difference. Like the sport. Well, I guess we have all got to start somewhere. Yeah, okay then, I'm off now. So don't forget, before you go, stop trying to be like Nike. Concentrate on your audience and use your values to build your product or service. Yeah, got it. Cheers. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this week's video. It was a bit of an experiment, so do let us know what you think. Do drop us a like and a comment, and do consider subscribing. We post videos nearly every week about design, design thinking, brand, strategy, and digital. Until next time, stay curious and see you in the next one.